What is cracking? It is your boy QB Passport Flexing coming back with another live stream on Ecuador. How is everybody doing out there? Let me know if you guys can hear me clear. You see, I got the new mic. Thanks to you guys, to the 2K, the donations, the super chats, the cash apps. I upgraded, got the mic, but I just want to make sure I'm sounding clear, okay? Uh, so please put that one in the chat and let me know. Okay, Ronnie Travels 1. Okay, let me get another one, please, because you guys put in the one before the last stream, and okay, all right, cool, cool. Uh, yeah. I didn't plug in my mic on the last stream, so it was the mic on the computer. Yeah, Just John said, that mic is much better. Appreciate it. Yeah, again, thanks for you guys supporting me. I got a new mic for the live stream, and then I got a mic also for, excuse me, the travel vlogs. So when you see me vlogging, you're going to have a more clear uh volume for me okay let me get to these super chats really quick ulysses salute salute thank you brother uh definitely got to interview you on the channel i know you're out there in guadalajara one of my favorite cities with them blanquitas so salute to you player uh and i gotta go back up man just john a big supporter of the channel Super chatting. I've been waiting for this topic. Absolutely. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, I got my guests coming through in a little bit. Uh, okay, Box, I can hear you. What up, brother? I got to interview you too. I know you ain't got no channel. Uh, but you're, you're a big supporter of me. And you travel to Colombia well, so you can definitely shed some light, okay? So, cool. Megatron, what up QB? Just had my passport appointment this past Thursday, absolutely. Uh, salute to you doing your appointment to get your passport. You're taking steps to experiencing a different lifestyle versus people living in a basement. And we can reference those, those people in another stream. So, but let's get right into it, man. Uh, Ecuador. A lot of people overlook Ecuador when they think of Latin America. It's Colombia, Peru, maybe Panama. But I'm telling you, Ecuador is one of QB's favorite spots. I've been there twice. To Guayaquil, Salinas, Montanilla, I'm not really a fan of. But I just want to play these clips. And we're going to have a discussion and bring Ecuador to light. Because it's overshadowed by, again, the countries that I just mentioned. And it's really the unknown land. But I'm telling you, it is very affordable, which I love. The beaches are nice. The food is great. The nightlife is solid. And of course, they have beautiful women. So you cannot lose, in my opinion, in Ecuador. And let me start playing some of these clips here. All right, we're going to add this right here. So, let me turn this down. All right, this is me coming through to Guayaquil right there. And that is the Malecón, by the way. And when I came through here, going through customs wasn't a problem. Let me pause this. This is right outside the airport. They got a cool, like, fishing pond. I'm like, let me stream that. Uh, 
yeah, a lot of goldfish right as you get out of the airport baggage claim. You'll see this fishing pond here, and I thought it was just really cool. By the way, you can t take Uber or N-Driver will pick you up from the airport, and it's very cheap if you're staying near the Malicone area. I think it's like $5, and if you wanted to take a taxi, it's $7. So yeah, that's some cool fish out there. Uh, this is the gym, smart fit. You know, gotta gotta stay active. I tell you guys, you want to get in a solid physique where you have the least resistance from women. I've lost what close to twenty pounds by exercising and changing my diet. So you guys should be motivated to do the same. And the Smart Fit membership is good throughout all of Latin America. Um, I think I pay like $19 a month. But if I would have got it in Colombia or Ecuador, it would I would have been paying cheaper like $15. Uh, or yeah, around $15. But $19 is still, that's still great. And I can work at any smart fit in latin america exercise get my cardio in and they're usually in all major cities so yeah that's me sweating like crazy and some of the talent out there working out at the gym um again Beautiful women, even when you're working out, you're going to see that over there in Ecuador. A little bit of the nightlife. I don't know why my buffering's a little slow here. But that's me outside of one of the bars. In Guayaquil. And I'm going to be making a nightlife video part two soon. So you guys are going to be able to check that out. But again, this, this, this is a cool girl. I mean, you see I'm height mogging out there being 6'3". Uh, but the women are very friendly. A lot of good hospitality. They were cool. No issues. I know a promoter out there. Um, it's solid. If you want to get bottle service, cool. If you just want more of the bar scene, they have that there as well. So you really can't lose in Ecuador, specifically in Guayaquil. I think the name of the place was Mona, which has like a downstairs, upstairs to it. That was me just getting ready before I go out for the night. This is the Airbnb. And I think I paid about $40 a night to stay here. They got a fabulous pool overlooking the river. Uh, this is just awesome. And when you go outside of this Airbnb area... There are a lot of restaurants and bars as well. I mean, you see the pool is clear water, peaceful, quiet. You can bring guests over, guest friendly, as long as they have an ID. So, you know, again, I, I like upscale combinations for a reasonable price. And this is how I travel. 
when I go to destinations like Waikyo. And sorry, the buffering is slow. It's weird. Um, I got to check on that for a next stream. But I really like that place. Highly recommend if you guys come to Guayaquil. Uh, this is me on the jet ski out there in Salinas, Ecuador. But I want you guys to notice something. I mean, this this is, what, seven months after my hair transplant. Yeah, six to seven months. So, again, um, I really like Salinas. Clear water, ocean. I will make a video on Salinas specifically so you guys are aware about that place. But Ace is live. He's been to Salinas as well. And the beach is beautiful. I really can't say that about other places in Latin America, but here in Salinas, beautiful beach, and it's only two hours away from Guayaquil. So that gives you a nice little view, a layout of Salinas. They got great seafood. Uh, most of the people that go out there are from Guayaquil and they go out there to party on the weekends. And the bus ride to get out there is like around $6. Very convenient. So, um, let me share screen really quick. All right, let's get that out of there. So that, that's kind of just like a preview of what you guys are going to see on the upcoming videos for Ecuador. Uh, the Red Lion as well. Great sports bar. Uh, let me read the super chat really quick. Gold Pill New Ranger. Thank you for the $5 super chat. We got 38 people in the building. If you just joined the stream, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, support QB. My fiance told me if she could have an open relationship, I gave her the okay. I'll benefit both of us. I'm excited. Mm. Um, we can discuss that, brother. So that's interesting. Um, but if it works for you, I'm, I'm, I'm a supporter, you know, but an open relationship, there's kind of pros and cons and I can discuss that a little later. Okay. So anyways, let's look at some of the places in Guayaquil. All right. Um, check out this bar here. Okay. All right, can you guys see this? I think you guys should be able to see this. Okay, it's coming up. Let me just hide your super chat. So this is one of the bars in Guayaquil. Let me get back over here. Um, all right. Again, I'm a person that enjoys upscale accommodations so i want to play the sound okay cool the sound is off so this, this looks like a custom drink and i think i went to three bars and i was out there in Guayaquil. um but I, I hadn't been to a place to this restaurant so one of the friends told me about it but the food looks good on the grill, healthy. Um, Negroni Guayaquil, that's the name of this restaurant. So this looks like somewhere you take a, a date. Oh, wow. Let's, let's check this out. Seafood Camarones, Pulpo, Mantequilla. Hamonazo al fuego. So this is like a shrimp plate. Yeah, that, that that looks pretty good. 
but you see it's upscale. So I tell you guys, you want to dress well, have a, a good appearance about yourself, because certain places, they may not let you in, um, depending on how you're dressed, I'm being honest. But this this looks good. This this looks more of a formal restaurant that you would take out on a date. Um, let's check this other one out really quick. But I like that. This is called Morrison. So this is another bar. Interesting. I mean, classic cocktails, kitchen and drinks. And like I said, when I when I travel to certain places, I'm looking for destinations like this because that's where you're going to find some decent looking women versus the hole in the wall joints that you will see other content creators go to. Uh, QB's not on that. That looks pretty lit upscale. Looks like you got to wear a collar shirt. Trendy. Um, and it looks like you got to make reservations too. That's what they're saying right here. Love the gin. Cool. So again, if you don't mind socializing, meeting friends, just trying something new, these are the type of places that you want to go to. That looks like a, a gin from London. Interesting. Okay. All right. Let's check out this other place. Um, right here. Now I'll get back to uh, to your guys's uh, chats in a second. So I think I've seen this one and this one. Okay, hold on one second. All right. I mean, you see the quality and the girls right there. Wow. Vento room rooftop. Vento. I said a friend Sonata on, on the weekends. So, this looks very trendy. You ain't going to find Pookie up in here. So, if you a smooth, clean-cut brother, this is probably a place... environment let's click on this one got a live band there so and like I said for me when I was out and about walking around whether it's the mall the gym the bar the club um I was getting a lot of attention out there for me. I can only speak for myself. Oh, wow. Whew. Yeah, they, they, they got some baddies out there, man. So, again, these are the options, the upscale accommodations that you can intend or check out 
when you're in Guayaquil. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, let me answer a couple of questions. Bug travel, Guayaquil over Quinto. I haven't been to Quinto yet, and that is on the menu. So when I get out there, I will let you know how Quinto is. So, young villain, have you ever considered visiting a Africa? I'll get out there in due time. <laughs> Bert Ross, congratulations on getting the 2K subs. Thank you, brother. So, yeah. I hope... This motivates you guys to want to go check out something different because, again, most brothers, when they go to Latin America, it's all about Colombia, Medellin, Bogota, um, Cartagena, and that's cool, but if you want something out of the norm and you don't really have to worry about your safety, I had no issues out there in Guayaquil. Um... Everything is close when you land from the airport to your Airbnb. Most likely you're going to want to stay in the north side of town uh, by the Malecon. And then there's this other upscale place called San Ber Bernardone. San Bernardone, I'm pronouncing it bad. But it's literally across the river about 15 to 20 minutes. Top notch. They got a nice park, plenty of upscale places to go. You're going to feel safe and you're not going to have an issue whatsoever. So I highly recommend you guys go to Guayaquil. Great entertainment, great food, bars, nightclubs, whatever you want to do. They got it. The beach. So the weather, it gets a little hot out there, but hey, it's it's all good. So, uh, Megabish, your content has me looking at GDL. I wonder how safe it is for a solo traveler. Again, Guadalajara is extremely safe. If you stay in Midtown Jalisco or Zapopan, you're going to be fine. I mean, it's going to blow your mind how beautiful and modern it is. So, I highly recommend you going out there. Uh, we got the homie DeMargo. What up, man? Probably staying at a hostel and going to the local spots. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, specifically, Montania. Okay? Uh, and I'm going to cover that in a little bit with the guests. Now, me personally, I wasn't a really big fan of Montania, but I think I might have went on a wrong weekend. But that's that place has a lot of hostels where you can stay at and do traveling on a budget. They have a Selena hostel. Um, I thought the rooms, the personal rooms were a bit too small, and I was literally right next to the damn DJ so the music was just playing all the way until like three or four o'clock in the morning it was crazy and that was during New Year's so we got 41 people in the building hit the like support your boy QB all right um Ronin travels What's good, CBO? Oh, yeah, and Arda Will. Yeah, shout out to those guys. Wow, man, Zoom to Thailand in the building. Okay. <laughs> Salute to you, man. I'm back in the Matrix. Finally cut one of your live streams. Salute. Yeah, I got to have you a guest on the channel. Uh, I appreciate your work. I appreciate what you're doing out here. Uh, much love and support. Definitely trying to put all these other places on the map that I've been to such as Guayaquil, Ecuador, which a lot of people don't know about. So, absolutely. Um, 
But overall, like I said, I recommend it uh, if you're a solo traveler, you want to have a good time, and the weather is great year-round out there in Guayaquil. Um, damn, this damn light. But anyways, uh, you're not going to have any issues. Now, certain places at night, you probably don't want to be around, like in central area but if you stay close to the malecone you're you're good you're golden so um you'll be all right over there okay one second here thank you guns for putting his channel in the chat zoom to chinaland if you guys want to go to Asia, go check that dude out. Uh, he has a lot of content on Asia for sure. Okay, cool. So, a lot of people kind of ask me, like, QB, like, why did you choose to go to Ecuador? Like, what was the purpose? And so when I originally went down there, this was in December, I was wanting to go to a place where the weather was warm and it was a non-touristic type of town. So it was between Panama City, Guayaquil, I think the third place that I was looking at was El Salvador between those three. And so I choose Guayaquil because I kind of looked at the accommodations. I'm like, wow, okay, if I can stay at this Airbnb and be close to the downtown and the airport for this price, I'm going to do it. Plus, they had a jacuzzi, but unfortunately, the water was not warm. Um, that played a big role into that. And then the flight ticket was relatively cheap. I think it was like around close to 325 round trip. So that played a role in making my decision to go out there and the videos that I had um, before which I can probably play one of them right now as as we're waiting on the guests to come through um, I'm just like wow okay you know I'm really really impressed of what they have to offer here and so the next time that I do go I probably want to go check out Quinto or Manta, which Quinto is higher in the mountains and it's kind of like a, a Bogota, Mexico City type vibe. So let me just show you guys the Malacone really quick here. Okay, one second. So this right here was me at the university. And there's a park right next to it. All right, I'm gonna play this at one speed. The landscape, the cityscape here in Guayaquil. Nice, peaceful place. Good area where I can actually vlog. Safe area. So far, so good. The weather is a little bit warm in this area, which I'm going to show a little later. And this was in December, by the way. Plazas, 80, 85 shopping, degrees. Places, restaurants, um, bench areas where you can relax. So it's pretty cool. It's a little humid out here. I believe it is summertime. So it may look cloudy, but it's a legit 85 degrees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you guys can see the river in the background. 
city has a lot of parks. So you're gonna see me going to parks to check those areas out. We're all good. I like it. Very, very peaceful. But all right, I'm gonna show you guys more a little later. Yeah, you guys can see it here. It's dope. All around, cool. All right, coming across here. Looks like your typical uh, snack stand. A lot of places are not open. Oh, wow. Okay. So this this looks like more you take a, a date. And so I'm literally in the courtyard of the University of Guayaquil. Um, and they have like this outdoor park with a few lunch places that were was really cool next to this river. Got a sign right here. I'm gonna slow in so you guys can see that. And that's kind of the view. And this is in the middle of the city. Out here, which is good. It's always a good sign. You know, in some places there's no filming. You got a little map coming across here. Okay. Puente zigzag. Monumental. Light cart. Okay. So yeah bar, restaurants, more restaurants on the other side. Cool. Zoom out just a little bit. And that's the university right there. And you can see right here a big oh, iguana. Right Look at that. Wow. Okay. You, you see iguanas a lot throughout right. that city. <laughs> like everywhere. Got a cat sleeping over there. So I guess this is the Universidad de Guayaquil. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, some cool stuff. So, you guys need to go check out that video if you want more information. And what up, Mr. Ray Harper International? What's good? What's good, my dude? It was good. Man, appreciate you coming through. Um, just tell us about yourself, man. You, you've been through Latin America. You've been to a lot of places that I've been to throughout Mexico, Guayaquil. Um, you've been in Medellin. So give us a little history of yourself and the channel and um, what to look forward in the future. Yeah, man. Um, Ray Harper, INPL. Um, like you said, um, I actually lived in Mexico for about like three to four years. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got to visit like many of the cities because I was actually based in Mexico City, but traveling to most most of the other towns and cities, like major cities like Guadalajara, mm -hmm. um, every other major city, León. Guanajuato, all of these places. So I'm like very well versed when it comes to Mexico. And then right. also like Central America, Nicaragua, like I think the only one that I'm missing is Belize. And I'm leaving Belize. fast because I got some plans for that. I'm gonna do a tour like Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, but um I've done all the Central America. I'm finishing South America now. I got the big ones left because I left I did it on purpose, like I'm leaving Brazil for last. I'm doing Brazil like end of the year. Mm -hmm. I'm doing Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay, and yeah, I think those are the last three that I'm doing end of this month. I'm end of next year, end of next this year in November. I'm sorry. November mm -hmm. for Argentina, Uruguay, and Peru, um, Paraguay. Um, like you mentioned, we done a, we done a lot of cities that you know similar. Like we did Peru. Peru was right. Hard. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy Peru, Ecuador, you know, with like crazy out there too. So re really quick, what do you think about this uh, comment here? Because we're going to play a couple of your Ecuador videos in a second. Uh, Darren G says, well, Ecuador isn't exactly known as a haven for beautiful women. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, it depends on you and what you're looking for, bro. Like, to tell you a little bit, like when I was going to high school in New York, I used to meet a lot of Ecuadorians. They all look short and not uh -huh. at all. And that's that's what I thought of it. I'm actually only one 
because I wanted to finish my South America tour, you know, and I really wanted to make sure that I did the record. And mm-hmm. despite that, there's so many other things. I just don't travel for women. I travel because I want to get experiences in different countries. I mean, we could get women anywhere, but the right. is also like a really great thing. And I, to my surprise, and I said it on my videos, like you can check out my channel. Like to my surprise, there was some beautiful, beautiful dimes over there, man. Everywhere I went. And uh-huh. it was social, nice. They would stop and talk to you. Of course, like, I mean, it, to me, I don't ever compare other people's experience. Like I want to get my own because, of course, they're going to gravitate in a different way towards me. Or maybe they're right. just gravitate in a different way to review. So to me, right. I had an amazing experience. I met six everywhere. They actually were pulling me, you know, so it wasn't like they were initiating the conversations most of the time. Nice. Um, me and you talked about, um, you know, Tinder and those things like that. And that was also of the road popping. I right. had some preparation before a visit. And I noticed that, you know, the, uh, the game was tough. So I was ready for it. And, and again, it was a good surprise. A lot of beautiful women everywhere. Everywhere. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, were you impressed by the by the beauty standards of the women in Guayaquil? If if I need to compare it to like Colombia, they're not at the same level. Like Colombia, of course, you see okay. a lot more beautiful women in Colombia. But when it comes, but again, I wasn't expecting to see that much. So for me, it was a great surprise. Like if you go to okay. Colombia type of level, you're not gonna get Colombia level. You're going to get something a little bit under that, but it's still right. hard. And depending on your game, not game, depending on you and how much they really into you, or they really like you, you could get top of the line. So right. mean, I want to be the best. I don't want to go to the best school and be the worst student. I want to go to the worst, stu- worst school and be the best student. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm going to a country where there's like 50% of the high women that have in Colombia and I could get 50% of them, I'm winning. So I don't really care about the you know how many there are but how many I can get so right okay okay and based on that photo right there you can see the caliber right and so we're gonna play one of your videos here um immediately I got this is a joint right here I don't know if you guys can see it so where are we at right here this is club leaving. That was my first night out of the plane. Let's see what happens. I'm, I'm waiting for the promoter. Okay. Now, and this is me waiting for your boy, for the promoter. He was um, already in the club. He already had a table ready for me, bottles, and everything. I was just waiting for him to come pick me up. Right. I just wanted to be escorted in the right way, the proper way. You know, that was my first night here, straight up from the airport to the club. Sorry about this damn commercial. QB needs to get YouTube premium. <laughs> and what night was this again? That was on a Thursday night, ladies night. Thursday night, ladies night. So guys, like I mentioned, this is the first club, club leaving. This is my first night straight up from the airport to the club. You know how we do. We don't waste any time. We got to get that knife like content for you guys. So I'm just walking around, checking it out so that you guys know to put this into context. Uh, That's a cutie the right there. Was $20 so that you could have access to the first floor and to the VIP on the second. If you only want the first floor, it's 15 And for a Thursday night, was it decent? You know, I mean, I've been there on the weekends, but was it still good? It was distant, but it wasn't the best night. They tell them, they, the guy, the promoter was telling me that, you know, now they open a few other clubs that are yeah, having the was literally, literally night literally as well. So now the uh-huh. crowd yeah, is divided multiple good. clubs. So that's more nice of the But it was okay. still, uh, again, like I said before, like, as soon as I'm getting mine, I don't care if it's 100 or if it's only five. Like, and I was getting mine out of the whatever the work they had there. But right. It, it was a good night, bro. I can't even complain for my first night. And this is directly getting off the airplane, correct? Straight off the plane, man. I just dropped my bag at the at the Airbnb. I'm bounced. 
Mm. Without not knowing anybody, my first Wow. Time, <laughs> this this <Okay>. guy <laughs> Yo, he's about to break her back. Oh my! Oh my goodness! Oh. Right, going to work. Okay. Yeah. Oh man, interesting. And then. uh so you, so th this is a, a rooftop that you also went to. Uh, I think I played this earlier on the stream. How was yeah. this place? Vento? That, to, to me, that was one of the top three places. Like, I went to about five to six clubs and bars. Uh -huh. And to me, that's like top three. I, mean, I love that place. I felt really, really good. Like, you know, like the people also treated me really well. Like, the people that worked there at the entrance, everything was like, Top notch. I mean, amazing view. And this is also in that place. Uh, what is it? San Borondon. So yeah, San Borondon. Correct. Mm -hmm. San Borondon. That's a that's a high scale club too. So that looks uh, fabulous. And, and the way they work there is that you basically have to buy like a it's like a cart that you buy. So the uh -huh. most the more money you put on it, the more you can use it to like purchase like your drinks and stuff like that. So. Basically, you could put anything from $40 and up. You don't have to pay an entrance, but you have to buy the cart. And then, you know, the good thing is that that cart is for you to use. So you can use it, and then if you don't want to use it anymore after that, you do it. So it's, uh -huh. it's like interesting the way they do that. There was a couple of clubs that have that same method of working, like when it comes to the entrance. And, and this place, for sure, you needed, what, a, a dress code to get in there? Yes, you have to wear like like you know like button down shirts and stuff like that. Of course, you can wear sneakers because nowadays you can wear sneakers everywhere. But um, button down shirt for sure. And uh -huh. then of course you have to have some type of look when you go in there too. Like if you can see, I'm the only brother in the whole club. Yes, I noticed that, and I see yeah. these cuties right here by the bar. <laughs> yeah, I got to meet them girls over there. They all like business owners and stuff like that. Like. That place, Ooh. like the women, okay. is like really on another mm -hmm. level. All right. Hey, hey. <laughs> right, feeling the vibes. Yeah. Uh, was was that a hookah that you were on? Yeah, I well, not a hookah. That's the uh, uh, what we call it. Uh, oh wow. The babe. Okay. All right. She she breaking it down for you right there, man. I mean, you, uh, uh, right okay and the drinks are fairly cheap you know it's really not no usa cra craziness i think uh -huh. it was like six dollars for like cocktails and stuff like that that night i only had cocktails most of the other clubs i was buying like bottle service because it's actually cheaper but i mean that type of club didn't it didn't feel like i needed to get a bottle it, 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 it made me look more classic if you had those type of drinks right yeah. Okay. There is another one that I wanted to uh, play really quick. Hold on. By the way, go sub to his channel, Ray Harper International. Um, which one was the one where you at the Red Lion? Is it this one? I only showed a little bit of the Red Lion where we were playing the game. What is it? Ever have I ever? Yeah, which yeah. is it? It's, is it it's this one? Just a little bit over there. <laughs> On this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I showed a little bit. Cause those, them girls were walling out, man. Right. Which I'm going to preview on the channel pretty soon. Okay. I mean, the kind of things that we're saying on that game, man. <laughs> I had a right. date with that night. And I know we talked about it. You're like, how are you going to bring a date, man? You crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, I learned I learned my lesson after that. I was like, ah, oh, man, this was the bad thing to do. Right. But, yeah, man, definitely, definitely, it, please. Is it is it in this video or the next one? No, that's that's a little bit. I just didn't put much of it in that video, in the nightlife video. Oh, it's in the nightlife video. Okay, let me go back over there. Okay, I think I might have. Huh. 
Is it's towards the end, right? I don't even remember. I think uh, it shouldn't be towards the end. She's the one in the middle. Okay. Oh, here it is. I see it right here. Okay. So that's the promoter, by the way. If you guys are ever in Ecuador, this is the red line right here. And this is your date on the right that you brought over there? The, yeah, I don't know if it's on the right or the left. The one without the uniform. <laughs> yeah, all right. And that's just, to, you know, because the red line... It's the place where you go early, like, you know, 8.09, and you get your right. on, you get started really ready for the club. And I'm pretty sure that's how you did it, too. Like, you know, that's, that's how you do it right. Like, you go there a little early, so you get to talk to the girls. They all sit on your table, you know, you buy a couple but, of but, but look at the love and support that you're getting, being the only brother there. They know you ain't from there, and they want to accommodate you. 100%. Like, <laughs> 100%. Right. I mean, I do get away with a lot of things because I do, I'm fluent in Spanish, so I'm really right. to navigate through those conversations and being able to pull them girls over there like easier, a little easier. So I'm shitting there a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. <laughs> either way, like they didn't know I spoke Spanish. Like when they first see me, they talk to me, and I never speak in, I never speak Spanish to anybody, regardless of where I go. I always speak English first, because I mean. And, and and does that throw them off? I'm gonna play a little bit more after this damn commercial. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Come again? No. Uh, so you're saying that it, it threw them off that they thought you only know English, right? Yeah. And you can speak fluent Spanish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, then, like, because I always do that, because, I, I mean, it's always a little more attractive when... And what place is this? Wow, I missed this one. Which one? That's, because uh, there's a couple of places that you didn't go there. There's, um, Blue Martini and Vibes. Okay. Oh, okay, this is the beginning of it. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, cool. So, what would you, what would you rate... Ecuador overall, if you had to give it a one through ten, what would you rate it? Like comparing it with anything else, it's just a, a rating, a regular rating. Like if I a regular it, rating, correct? I would say it's a good eight. A good eight, nice. So, overall, food, women, accommodation, nightlife, because you also went to Montania as well. Yeah, I went to a couple of beaches. I went to Montenegro, and I also went to General Mills. Mm -hmm. General Villas, um, beach. Remember, I also have a video about that. They have this. This is that. That's the closest beach to the to Guayaquil. Like before you get to Salinas, where you went, you pass by that beach. So, right. like on Sundays, they have like a big beach party there, and a lot of the locals from the city, the people that you know, they. Have a little more wealthy, like they're able to fight there. They go mm -hmm. there for, for Sunday nights. Okay. And they took like the same day, but I stay there for a night. And so I was able to do those two. So, like, the beach life is also off the hook over there. So that's why I say it's an eight, because that's the one thing that Medellin doesn't have. You know, mm -hmm. you have all of that across the beach, the proximity to the beach. Like, you don't have to drive to, you don't have to take a flight to go to the beach. You can just drive for a couple hours and you're there. Right. So Montania is two hours away from Guayaquil. Oh, Montania and... is like four. Oh, you, you know what? You're right. It is four. Salinas, Salinas is, two, is like two. Two, two hours. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, what would you recommend, guys, being a first-time traveler to Ecuador, like the do's and don'ts? I think first thing, make sure you do your research. Okay. Make sure that you are that you get into something that you're gonna enjoy, and this is something that you know that's for you, because that's not for everybody. Like, because mm -hmm. there's not gonna be like a lot of Americans there or tourists there, like there are in, in other countries where. Which is a good thing for us, the ones that right. don't have a problem with that. But right. if you do have a problem with that, like maybe revisit that or go with it with someone else that's been there before. Mm -hmm. But um, besides that, like of course, get, um, watch our videos. Watch my video and your videos. Do of videos. course. Because we go over like where to stay, best places to stay. You know, how to even take the taxi from where and what, like you just mentioned. Do you want to mm -hmm. be close to the airport? Um, like the malls, they have really high end malls where you can meet people left and right, the gyms, right? Like that. So I would say definitely research first, get that ready. Um, the food is amazing, so you're gonna find good restaurants everywhere, regardless mm -hmm. of what you say. So that's iron really cheap too, like the, the prices are cheap. I think the only thing that I would say that is that it was a little surprising with me was paying for the club to get in, like twenty dollars was a little bit too much. Right. Uh, yeah, especially on a Thursday night, because yeah. for living, I've been there twice. I think entry fee was like maybe five dollars, if that. Yeah, it was fifteen dollars to regular admission, and then twenty okay. for VIP, so you could do both. Right. Um, I've never been. I paid for both. I'm like, well, five dollars oh. more, five dollars less. Yeah. So, um, I would say, make sure, like, you already know that, so be prepared for that. The the currency is dollars, so you're good. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so, so that's also that. That's something and, and, and hold on really quick. Let me kind of touch on that because when you say dollar, for some travelers, they're thinking, oh, it's automatically USA prices. But to my knowledge, I think Ecuador is less expensive compared to Colombia overall. Um, they use the dollar, but everything is cheap from the food, accommodation, um, everything that you spend buying clothes, etc., electronics. For the most part, it's not going to be USA prices, even though the, the official currency is the dollar in Ecuador. Yeah, Your my thoughts? Uber taxi from the airport to downtown, because I was staying downtown, was four dollars. So that would give you an idea. Four dollars mm -hmm. from the airport downtown. That was that's insane. When they told me the price, it was like what? Mm -hmm. And then every other taxi, I didn't pay one Uber that was more than five dollars. That is how far it was. Right. Now, when you went to uh, Montania, did you? Did you take a bus or did you go there via Uber? I took the bus. So basically, again, like I said, I stopped in different beaches throughout the way. So right. I stopped like an hour away where I went for a Sunday night, have fun. Then the next night, the next day, I took the bus from, to Montanilla and it was like three hours from there. On right. the bus. But it's a beautiful scenery, like all the way, because you go by the beach and you go to different towns and stuff like that. So. It mm -hmm. didn't feel so long because of the, you know, the views and the times and stuff like that. So it was good. It okay. Feel long. Right. Um, and you flew from Miami or New York? I flew in from Miami. Okay. And was that a direct flight? Yes, 100% direct flight. Oh, that, man. <laughs> Lovely. So, again, if you guys are in Miami, Florida area... You get a direct flight to Guayaquil, no problem. For me, unfortunately, because I'm in the West Coast, I got to fly to Panama and then from Panama uh, to Guayaquil. But the layover is only like an hour, less than an hour, so it's, it's not a big deal at all. Um, it's really nice. There's always a lot of hard chicks at the airport. Oh, yeah. Beautiful women in the Panama City Airport. Yeah. Safety. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Did you feel at any moment while you were out there, your safety was an issue? It's the trick. I didn't feel anything. I didn't even see people arguing. Nothing. 
Mm-hmm. And the thing is that, like, I went out, if you watch my video, like, I went out that first night that I got there, which is the biggest, you know, culture change when you go, or culture pa- impact when you first go to a country. You right. know, I went to the club, and then after that, we went to an after hour, like, with my, with the guy that we was with, um, mm-hmm. the club promoter. And that place that we went to for an up an hour was a little sketchy. But still, nothing happened. Nobody was look. Nobody looked at me in any different way. I felt comfortable everywhere I went. But mm-hmm. the locals do say that if the the crime is right, um, they all, the cops, the, the 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 taxi drivers, the Uber drivers, um, they were always like recommending to you know do this, do that, don't walk around this way, don't walk around that way. Um, right. Again, and that's what I was saying. Like, do your research because all these little place all the um neighborhoods that we talk about is the safe areas like downtown is totally safe there's a lot of mm-hmm. protection around there like right. Udessa is a really good place Kennedy North there we I mean by the river as well where you were saying it's super safe so right. all the parts of the city are safe and it's good to you can hang around there day and night by the Malecon you can hang out with day and night nothing's gonna happen to you but of course, if you go down south to those other areas, then yes, it, it might get a little dangerous. But and I, the north northern area too. So when you go past uh, the downtown to the north side, like really, really north, because the shorty that I met, that's where she stayed at. Um, it can it can get a little sketchy over there. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, man. But I didn't see anything. Uh, mm-hmm. I had a good time. I wasn't concerned or worried about anything. I was just chilling, walking around everywhere. I walked around all over downtown, day and night. So mm-hmm. if, if there is danger, I didn't see any. Because that's okay. the same thing they said about Mexico. But I, I mean, living there for like four years, I never saw anybody not even arguing. So. Right. I, don't know. I think now, it's more experience for sure. Right. Now, in regards to the women, you you met them, what, out in public or dating apps or... Friends. Dating, dating apps is a good option. Depends. Mm-hmm. On, I mean, you talked about this, but I'm a hunter. Like I don't, I don't do dating apps a lot. Like I'm a hunter. Like I need to meet them in the wild. I need to meet them in the clubs, in the right. malls, in the streets. So that's how I met everyone. And then also like going to Red Lion, I really connected with the girls there, and they really gave me some pointers like where to go. Mm-hmm. You know, they put me to some people as well. So. You know, the more you talk to people, the more connections you get. And I think that's that's a life. That's a beautiful thing. Right. And so women were never an issue meeting them. Not uh, at all. Nice. Nice. Wow. Good to know. Good to know. Again, um, QB, mm-hmm. when you saw me in the club with the girls, like I showed them at the beginning and then towards the end they were dancing with me. Like I never I didn't even know these people. And that's the high scale club that you would think they'd be a little bit more conceited, but no. Right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it almost looked like they didn't want to give you space. Like, hey, you know, you need to come holler at me. Uh, that was, that was the vibe that I was getting when you were at that upscale place. Yeah. So that was cool. Uh, and the place that you're staying in downtown, you can invite guests over. Was it a hotel or Airbnb? It was an Airbnb, I, because I really like to really see the city when I go. So I stayed in three different Airbnbs when I was there. So I stayed okay. in the downtown area for like three to five days, three, four days. Then okay. I went to the Kennedy by the airport, stayed mm-hmm. there for a little while too, really comfortable. And then I also stay at the beach, like two of the, the other beaches as well. Right. And all of the places you could bring people like a full guest friendly, no, no problems at all. Right. Um, some of them have no. Both of the places that I was saying they had like guards at the front, but they still it doesn't matter that you ask for information, which is a good thing. I like that. Okay. And like you say, all you need is an ID to get in, and you're good to go. Nice. And what would you rate the nightlife in Montania? Because did you party out there or or no? Yeah, a little bit. I didn't do much. Okay. I was a little tired by then because it was. Uh, I was there on a Monday night, and oh, okay. it wasn't super live till like four in the morning. That's when it started getting good. So at like around three, I was like, "Man, I'm done with this. I'm going back." But right. that was starting to get popping, and like you okay. mentioned, most of the places to stay there is hostels. 
So hostels are mainly in Montanilla, correct? Yeah, most of the places in Montanilla is, is going to be hostels. Of course, they got like high scale hostels like Selinas and stuff like that. Right. But um, yeah, and then those people, you know, it's going to be mostly tourists that you're going to meet in Montanilla. Okay. Okay. And did you do anything off the beaten path, like visit uh, a park or a museum? Or did an excursion while you were out there? I didn't do excursion. I got to go to the steps. We walk all the way to the top. Oh yes, that's to right. The museum, museum on the top. I went to and the Santa top. Ana. Yes, I went to the Santa Ana steps. We mm -hmm. went to the Malecon. I wanted to do my drone, but I, I didn't get a chance to. But um, and then my my excursion was actually the beach. I didn't get to do like I wanted to do four wheeler, but I didn't get um I didn't give enough time. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. And so you spend what, seven days total in Ecuador? Yeah, it was about seven days. Okay. And would you go back to Guayaquil or would you want to see like another place? Well, once I'm done with South America, I'm definitely coming back. I left some unfinished business over there. So I got okay. to do my number two. I have to come back with some stuff that I left there behind. Right. Um, we don't leave. We don't leave. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and so, like, can you kind of clarify? So uh, you met a shorty out there that you're still in contact with and you're trying to see her again, basically? Oh, yeah. No, I met multiple shorties. So there's a few that I have to go back and see. Because okay. there, there was a lot that, we, you know, we got to chill, hang out and do whatever we did. But then there's mm -hmm. other ones that because of time, we didn't get to really get as far as we wanted to. Because there was okay. so many dates from it. Like that one day that you saw me in the Red Lion, I had right. three, days, three dates that one day. So for me, it was like jumping <laughs> left and right. Oh, wow. I love it, man. See, that's what I'm saying, guys. Like, you have to go to places where you're wanted, but no Spanish and develop a social circle. Uh, so some of the girls that you met, did one of the girls from the Red Lion kind of put you on a friend, or they were all from hunting from the club? It was um, ninety percent hunting, and then one of the girls from Red Lion put me on a friend. Mm -hmm. I put them myself too because that night um, a lot of things were coming out, so I noticed some some of them were interested as well. So I couldn't mm -hmm. do much. Because I had a date with me that night, but um, right. That's that's another person that I have to see as well. One of the girls from there too. But to me, that's a great problem to have. Um, you're showing the pre-selection. Obviously, they're feeling you know the style, foreigner, and it's like, wow, you showing up to this place with a date? Okay. Uh, and again, no resistance for the most part. And you came off as friendly, charming, and it was it was instant for you for the most part, which is great. We talked about you for a little bit too. Your name, yeah. Came up the time. So, so what what did they mention about me? Because honestly, bro, I'll be a hundred percent honest. I was there to kill time. Like I wasn't in like in the mode to like try to get at one of them, but. Uh, they seem very receptive towards me. So, can you enlighten what they were talking about? Well, that game got very, very hot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was very sexual, and they kept talking about how, you know, they've been with multiple men in the night, how they like right. it, like in front and back, how they do this, right. how they do that. And then, you know, I brought your name up, like, yo, my boy, this, my boy, that. And one of them said, yeah, he was here, but he was kind of quiet. He said, right. I'm like, you, you know, you would have, what, what happened? Why you didn't talk to him? And she said, well, you know, I kind of wanted to, but he was quiet. I'm like, all right. So, so what if he comes back? And he's like, yeah, like, yeah he's a cool guy. Like, you know, when he comes right. back, he'll come visit us again. And I'm like, all right. You know, I'm going to tell him. I, I don't, I think I called you that same second. I'm like, yo, yo yes. Sweet. Yeah, you, yeah. And I know which girl it is. And she's in, in the oh, video. Yeah. Banging body, curvy, uh, brown skin. So, uh, yeah. If I go back out there, I got I got her WhatsApp. I'll hit her up and see see what's up. But yeah, super cool. She was super super cool. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. Awesome. 
So uh, I'm going to open up the, the live stream. Um, do you, are, you, are you cool to answer any questions from the guests in regards to Ecuador or other countries in Latin America? Yeah, no problem. I'm here for Okay. You. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we're going to open up the panel. If you guys have any questions for me or Ray Harper International, let us know. Uh, while we wait for people to come on, so, I mean, you've been to Mexico, you've been to El Salvador, you've been, you went to Medellin recently, uh, how, how was that experience in Medellin? Medellin is like going back home, man, like, I don't, I mean, it's not my favorite city in the world, for, to be honest, like, out of Colombia, mm -hmm. I like the one place that no one likes, I like Bogota, so Medellin, when I go to Medellin, I just go to visit friends because I have a lot of friends. I spend a lot of time there, so it's mm -hmm. not big to kind of hook up of anything. It's mostly to visit my friends because right. I really enjoy my time there. But if I want to get like like hook up and stuff like that, for me, for right. me Bogota is the spot. And this is for me. And I know a lot of people are not going to agree, but that's the way I feel about that. Okay. Uh, now, you know Bogota, it's a lot colder compared to Medellin. Uh, so you don't mind the weather being out there in Bogota? And Bogota is definitely on my bucket list. I got a good friend that's out there. It's not too far from Gu Guayaquil, which I like Guayaquil. That was a cool place in Santa Marta. But the weather... It was like mm -hmm. fall in New York. So I love fall and spring in New York because that's where you okay. dress up, do some layers. Right. Like I'm, I'm in Miami right now. So I'm over here sleeveless. She's right. like I'm about to go out right now. But um, when I'm in New York, I'm able to wear like a nice blazer. With mm -hmm. this, like, you know, I could shoot it up. Like I'm actually a stylist. That's what I do. So right. so when I'm in Bogota, I'm able to, you know, bring my whole class there and do my thing when I'm over there. So I feel Je comfortable and happy there. Just John, welcome to the panel. Uh, thank you for the super chat, by the way. You have any questions for myself or Mr. Ray Harper International in regards to Ecuador or any countries that we've been to? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. thanks, man. You all, you know, I'm always supporting you. You know what I mean. Right. Um, and now, this was a topic that I do want to talk about because I've I've never actually been to Ecuador and I've never heard anything about Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask about Guayaquil specifically, right? Mm -hmm. So, from what I hear, right, from most from most of my buddies who's at, who've actually been there, they say that Quito has the most like kind of melanated women. But does Guay is Guayaquil the same, or would they have more of like the lighter side? Are they more on the light side or on the darker side? Ray, you want to go first, and then I'll follow up after. I didn't see a lot of melanin women over there, to be honest. Like, um, I know there's a community. Was one of my Uber drivers told me about it, but I didn't see them much. And I think it's also because of the places that I was visiting, because I was more like, you know, going different places. But I didn't get to see it like, you know, like you see them in other countries. So in Guayaquil, I would say. 60% Blanquitas. Uh, when I did my nightlife video, which we can bring that up really quick. Uh, the girl that I met, she was on the lighter side for sure. Like she told me she has family in Spain, actually. Uh, and for Ray and myself going to the Red Lion, it was a... The, the girls were all fair skin, all of them. 100%. Right. And so I would say for Guayaquil, they're going to be more on the lighter side. I think Guayaquil and the coastal cities, they're going to be more on the lighter side. Um, whereas Quinto, you might get some more, more melon if guys are wanting that. They'll be more on the melanated side. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. And so I guess another question I kind of had was, I mean, the saying is Ecuador has some of the best seafood in South oh, America. Man. Tell me about yes. it. I need to know. Yes. And yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Talk yes, to me about yes, it. Yes. 
I, I think, QB, you could talk about this one a little bit more because I saw your plates, man. You were just killing it out there. Yeah. So, really quick, I'll answer that. But, yeah, this is the Spanish girl, the white one that I met out there in, uh, in Guayaquil right off of Tinder. Cool. We hung out. I saw her, you know, the second time that I went, went back out there. Uh, but... They also, hey, if, if brothers want melon, they got that too. And that was the homie Johnny that went out there with me. That was that was his match off of Bumble. So, natural, long hair, 23, 24, banging body. Uh, and he had that. So, hey, they, they got a little bit of everything. But to answer your question in regards to the C... Yes, the seafood is, it's up there with Mexico in regards to seafood. Uh, I, I give it a, probably about a nine in the quality of the food out there in Ecuador. Oof, that's pretty high, man, because mm-hmm. when I had, when I had ceviche in Peru, that was, that was amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Peru is, is of the whole too. Ray, Ecuador's you... on my bucket list, but it's not very, it's not like very high on my bucket list, but it is there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was going to ask you, Ray, are you a ceviche guy or? I don't, the problem, I don't, I'm, a, I'm not a ceviche guy 100%, can, no. Okay. I, I actually, I'm allergic to, to shellfish, so I, almost, I only do fish, all the food, okay. like I don't do like anything on the shelf. Gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, seafood you're you're not gonna miss out there. Uh, I'm gonna bring up a vlog in regards to the seafood in one of these videos. But there's an area in Guayaquil, and there's nothing but seafood restaurants and walking distance, and all the plates with crab are less than seven dollars. From garlic crab to curry crab. All different flavors, less than seven dollar plates. Damn, that's amazing! Right? Wow. Now, look, for me, I'm not gonna lie. I like fish. I don't mm-hmm. really like crab. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crab and lobster aren't really my thing. But I love sea bass and stuff like that, and fish just in general. That's me too. I love okay. fish. What 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 type of fish specifically, uh, Ray? Snapper, snapper is my joint. Oh, red snapper. Yeah. Okay. okay. I've never had a red snapper. I need to have one then. Red snapper is nice. I know for salmon, but red snapper is right. Uh, they do have sea bass out there in Ecuador. So, if if you want some good bass, you can definitely. Uh, that's on the menu out there for sure. All right. Cool. Thanks for that, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so back to you, Ray. So Medellin is kind of like a, a a no-go for you for the most part? I mean, it, it, I love the place. Like, mm-hmm. I just don't – it's just not my favorite. I mean, I just go there again because of friends, not because I really – like, oh, my God, I have to go to Medellin. It's not really like that. Right, right. I and what – yeah. right. And what about like El El Salvador? Because you went there recently too. See, El Salvador is more on my feet. I love El Salvador. I think it's more like the people. You know, I was watching this document the other day, where the documentary the other day when they were saying El Salvador is like number three with the most single women, or the, like the majority of women versus men. Wow. But I, I I don't see it like that, but but I mean, it came out in that in the documentary, and when I'm there. I don't get to see that much, but I'm always rolling around with a whole bunch of guys and they bring girls. So I don't really have to go out of my circle. Right. Which is actually a good thing. But um, but I mean, now when I go back, I'm definitely going to take a look at that. What, what, what's the quality of women out there in El Salvador? They have a little bit of everything. I mean, mm-hmm. I think it's more like Ecuador, like similar to that. Okay. I know okay. it's, it's super safe out there, so you could go anywhere at any time of the day, and you could just meet people everywhere now. 
Especially Got if you it. go to the beach area. That's that's like the best place to go. Right. Um, and what would you say as of right now your favorite place in Latin America and why? I'm gonna tell you this this year because Mexico is oh. Mexico is always gonna be number one. But this year, Me Mexico is always gonna be number one. Mexico is always gonna be number one. Damn! But, but, wow, that's pretty uh, bold of you. Right, uh, especially from the East Coast. Why? Really quick. Why? Why is Mexico number one right now? Because I lived there three years, so I got oh, to okay. really experience that. I have like really good friends you know like i could go there anytime i know my way around right. I know like i know like the bronx like okay. i mean i know the mexico city like i'm in the bronx like i'm, I'm i feel comfortable there you know i don't right. there's no uncertainty like i just feel comfortable in mexico like i feel at home so for me it's always going to be number one outside okay. of you know where i'm at right but then this year in mm -hmm. all the countries that i've been this far I think number one, Peru, number two, Nicaragua, and El Salvador, number three. Wow. Nicaragua. Mm. Wow. Well, so none of, none of the South American countries cracked the top three then, right? Yeah, <laughs> Peru. <laughs> yeah, oh, Peru. Peru. Okay, got it. Oh, okay, Peru my number bad. one this year. Wow. Oh, I see. And so you two both went out in Lima, Peru, um, which I didn't get a chance to. How was your experience with the nightlife in Lima, uh, Har Ray Harper? Oh my God, I killed the nightlife over there. I think it was amazing. I, I already had a friend that was uh -huh. been there for many many times, like for long periods of time. So we connected over there, man, and he already had a like a plug. So mm -hmm. we were able to just go everywhere. I mean, and then you know, I'm a professional traveler. I like to say I'm already know how to move around, so. Whenever I went to these clubs, I would just be like, hey, I'm a YouTuber from the U.S., and I just want to come to your club and see what's up. And they would give you, like, VAP access, all kind of stuff. Like, if there are VAPs there. They have, like, three different VAPs. Like, it's regular VAP, mm -hmm. VAP, and then top-level VAP. Where, like, hold, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Shout out to Kings for the 999. Keep crushing Doomers. Yes. Uh, and we'll we'll address them on another stream, by the way. Uh, great screen, uh, great stream, excuse me, and info. I really appreciate that. Like I said, I give back. I hope you like the new mic, all right, and other stuff that QB purchased from the Super Chats. Uh, go ahead and continue, and I'm going to probably play a little bit of the nightlife over there uh, in Peru from your channel. So explain that again r regarding uh, Lima. They have like, like those neighborhoods, the the really good neighborhoods actually have mm -hmm. like areas for nightlife. So like if you're saying in Barranco, if you're saying like in Miraflores, there's different areas. So I was staying in Barranco and that area in Barranco where they, they have like all the clubs, like it's, it's madness out there, man. There's, there's so many hot women, it's not even funny, bro. It's just, Right. I had a good time. I actually had a someone come in my channel and leave a comment like, "Oh my God, they they pay you to say that Peru is good." I don't know if it's not good for you or them or he, but it was good for me, bro. Like, in my opinion, like if every, again, like I said at the beginning, everyone is gonna have a different experience. Right. Why you gonna be based on what you're able to bring to the table? So, right. And and like for me. What really makes a good nightlife for me? We're gonna play this in better quality. Um, That's the boy right there, the guy next to me, the white boy next to me. That's... Okay. Yeah. And, and and what's the name of this club over there in Lima? Noise. You were... Noise. Yeah. Okay. The funny thing about those clubs, you really need to know, like the hookup or know someone because they change so. On one night, the club might be noise. Another night, it might have a different name. So the club is not a name after the actual location. It's based on the party. Oh, got it. Got it. Um, one thing that I, I will say, what determines a good nightlife for me is the alcohol selection, dance floor, obviously, and then 
this is a no-brainer, but the ratio of women compared to men. Um, and what I've noticed in this video that, you know, we're playing, the ratios seem really great at that club there in Lima. Yeah, man, 100%. Damn. Mostly women there. Shoot. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was I stayed in Bar Barranco, Barranco, and I, I wouldn't say that Barranco had a lot of kind of like the discos and the clubs, but the ones they do have are great. They don't have many, but they're good. And so I found myself leaving Barranco a lot to Miraflores because I felt like the nightlife was just better in Miraflores than in Barranco. Because Barranco is a smaller neighborhood, but it's great, it's safe, uh, and man, you, you'll love the walks. So many parks over there. Uh, mm -hmm. University nearby, so it was great. I loved it. And the Airbnbs, right? Like my Airbnb was crazy, bro. It was so yeah, crazy. I, me and QB made a live on on my Airbnb, and it was right. nuts too. Yeah, right. Um, and I was there inside the room, man? That shit was crazy. Yes, that was crazy. And was there a cover to get in here, Ray? I didn't pay. And I didn't make any lines. I, I would just say that I'm from the U.S. and I'm a YouTuber and they would let me in everywhere. I <laughs> wow. Dude, that the night, the, the line was like two blocks long. I just went to the front and I said, hey. And I don't speak Spanish to anybody. I spoke English. Right. And, right. You know, I, that I didn't speak any Spanish till the last minute. And they were like, okay. We, I mean, they basically would, I, I, would, I, I would hear them talk to each other like, you know, like saying that they don't understand what I'm saying and all of this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, whatever. And then they would let me in, give me VIP access, free drinks. Uh huh. <laughs> so I mean, I had a good time. Nah, it looks it looks very nice. Um, security, okay. I mean, that club looks massive. Dude, and that wasn't even the biggest one. The second night, like, I went out, we went out on the Saturday night, and the club mm -hmm. was, like, full filled. Like, I haven't seen a club that big in years. Like, it was so big that they have fences inside the club. Like, and it was an actual club, like a warehouse. Right. And so, really quick, a, a lot of guys are not wanting to go to Peru because they say the women look too indigenous. Uh did you witness that or are most of the pretty women in peru from like other places like venezuela colombia uh in in peru um i wish i could have i don't know if you're gonna be able to see them that day there in the second okay. club i went to another spot and the girls that were actually the, the models of the club it was like four of them like mm -hmm. i took with one of them like and she's like Ten and a half, bro. Ten and a half. So I don't know what they talk about. Again, everyone is gonna get a different experience. Right. I don't, I didn't have that issue. Like I was meeting like her that right here, we got to talk a little bit. But that one is uh -huh. actually Venezuelan, the told um Right. Well I right there. But in the other club that we went to, bro, it was like supermodels on that club. Wow. I don't know what they talk about. I think again it depends on where you go. Like, if you don't have the plug and you don't know where to go, you're going to go to the clubs where you're going to find that type of people. I really don't know what to tell them, but I had a really good time with hot chicks everywhere. Right. And and that's why we have these channels and you guys yeah, can hit us up. Right there. Look so at I, I have one question for, for Ray, if I can. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Ray, did you when you were in, in Peru, did you mostly stay in Barranco and Miraflores, or did you kind of leave those areas? I, I actually went all over Peru. I did Cusco. I did a lot of stuff. But when I was in actually Lima, I, I was between Miraflores and, and Barranco. I didn't actually go anywhere else. I didn't get the time. I went out to another area that I don't even remember. We went to an after hour, and it was like a strip club. And there was a lot of pay for play in that one. And I was like, man, I don't feel like pay for play. I'm doing very well right now. So right. Like, it was like four in the morning. So I was like, ah, whatever. Like, let's, let's just go. It was me and another guy um, that I met there from Philadelphia that came from Colombia. He lives in Colombia now and he was there. 
I guess, visiting and stuff for a week. I mean, there's a lot of girls here. Damn. You know I, I was going to say, if, if that's the case and you mostly stayed in Barranco and Miraflores, I would say, I would say that's the reason why you would find yourself seeing more of the lighter side of, of women because there's specifically in those places, you'll see a lot of women who are non-Peruvian. You'll those see a lot of non-Peruvians, non but Peruvians those too. Those in gold right there. They got, the girls were in gold, the gold dresses. Yeah. Those are the, uh, the, the models, like the promoters and stuff oh. like that. Oh, okay. okay. I, I actually, so I actually wasn't in those areas a lot, but I wasn't. I, I have explored it, but I kind of left because I had a good plug who took me to more dangerous areas, you know, kind of outside of San Isidro, um, you know, Miraflores and Barranco. Okay. And so I was able, I had a plug who took me. So I saw a lot of like actual Peruvian women. And my experience was, yeah, they, a, a lot of them have that indigenous look. And I'm not mm -hmm. going to lie, it was a little disappointing for me because QB knows that I'm a milkman. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I mean, why did you go to those places to get disappointed? Like, stay in the light, stay where. Well, yeah, but it was to see something new, and it, and I had a situation in which Peru was more of like a spontaneous thing for me. So, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, but but, but, but yeah. travels. Welcome to the stream, brother. Uh, any questions yeah. for the panel, including so, look, the guests? So, so, I just want to add on to the. The Peru topic, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like it, like in Mer Miraflores and Branca, uh, there's there's a lot of light skinned Caribbeans out there. But once you start going to the downtown area, you're gonna see those uh, nat uh, those native looking Caribbeans. Mm -hmm. uh, but then in the Branca area, you're gonna see some white, like I'm talking about white white Caribbeans, like and they look Spaniards, because uh, I stayed both areas. Mer Miraflores is in Branca. And Bronco is like they have a more of that European look. Uh, so as you get close to the downtown area of Lima, they, they start looking like central area. You're still looking like those uh, indigenous uh, their folks. Uh, there's another area actually in Peru that's actually a nice area. So you got Bronco, Miraflores. There's another area I forgot the name is starts. Uh, it's where all the you know the embassies and everything is is it at uh, is another area just north mm -hmm. I believe it's north of uh, Miraflores but that's another good area. Um, yeah, um, Lima is definitely being slept on. I mean the food is amazing. Uh, the women, right. uh, I mean they're, they're there. I mean, uh, like, but I, I would say you need for, for guys coming in. It's like you can't do a weekend warrior out there trip. You know, you right. need more than uh, a week out there just to get used to the environment, mm -hmm. and especially if you don't speak Spanish. You know, uh, mm -hmm. so you definitely more need more than a week to get out there and uh, you know get your foot wet. And yeah, it's been nice. Uh, I enjoyed my time over there. The weather was amazing when I went there. That went uh, end of the year last year, uh, and the weather was just oof, totally amazing. You got. It doesn't go, go below 65, and it doesn't go above 75. So, right. so at night, you don't have to put on the AC or anything, heater. Anything. So uh, food is amazing. They got some afro Caribbeans out there. So if you're into the, if you're into the, uh, to the sisters, <clears throat> they do have those time. But uh, well, you, you'll see them throughout the city. You know, if you see somebody probably black, it's, it's probably them. Um, but they do show us uh, love out there, man. Well, I was I was getting choosing signals, right? Uh, but when you do get choosing signals, you do have to approach the women. Are not gonna come up to you and say, "Hey, I like you." Always, that's something you always, as a man, like uh, eighty uh, Harper said, uh, we're our hunters, so you gotta you gotta approach, you know. So, so l let me ask you, because uh, that's kind of what do you? Can you define that a little bit more? So do you approach just randomly or do you look at the girl and then engage the body language and then see, I did half and half. Half, half, and the, half. half the time I was approaching them when they were showing me two the signals. Then the other half I was like, dang, this chick is bad, bro. I got to approach. So uh -huh. I was getting their WhatsApp numbers and I was doing that. 
I think one day I got like 10 different WhatsApp numbers and I start texting. I got, I got overwhelmed because I forgot who was who or they do, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> this, this. I got confused a little bit, but you definitely, um, I was able to connect. You definitely got to approach. So if you are an introvert person that doesn't like to approach anything like that, uh, Lima is not free. Right. If I can add uh, to that QB, go ahead. Um, I, I did notice. I'm not sure if, if uh, Buck Travels would agree with me, but one thing I did notice is that when they do give you choosing signals, it is overwhelmingly noticeable. Yep. It is so obvious. That's something I noticed. It, bro. Nice. Just John, uh, like literally, they are licking their lips. They're they're coming near you. Uh, they're you know they sh- coming near you, then they come back again, and that's the choosing signals. Hey, come pick me. Come say, come say something. You know. I did notice that. What they're saying. And at, at that point, is you as a man, you gotta you gotta go up to her and say something, you know. Right. And what about for you, Ray? Is it similar to what they're talking about? Would you look at a girl across the room, right, and she looks at you back and, and engages you? Then you go and approach her, or are you just random? Like, okay, this girl looks beautiful, whether she's paying attention to me or not, I'm just gonna go over there and talk to her. Nah, I get two and females and they come over. Okay. Is more than you, the one person. I mean, in this case, in Peru, most of right. the time they were the they were either coming over or would like do like they like the guys mentioned like they were either do something like say hi from far or something, or uh-huh. come to you know, like pretend they're gonna buy a drink or something or pass by. But they normally were doing the initial like um interaction. Okay. Got it. Got it. Um, I think that's very important because, again, you have certain guys. They'll go travel to a certain place. And because they're American, they have this arrogance. And they just think that all the women are poor and they're gringo. And they should bow down to them regardless on how they look, how they dress the arrogance so i want this to be known that hey you still have to put your best foot forward when you go to these places these establishment you have to meet the dress code you got to look nice you got to put on cologne you got to get your hair cut or your groom correctly to have any success uh would you agree to disagree 100 percent. okay Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. One hundred percent on that one, man. And I will say, man, if I do go back again, I will say I will this time I'll back around. I would actually get more love now. Now that that I got my my body together, uh, you know, mm-hmm. everything is checking out. I would actually do way, way, way better than the first time I went there. First time I went there for for the first week or so, I was kind of I was out there for a month, so I was kind of feeling out. But I will be very confident uh, the second time if I do go over there. Uh, that Mary Flores is, uh, is is not the only place you can go. You can go to Bronco at night, and it's safe. Yeah, right. it's safe. Look, it's let, safe. Let me read you this have, comment from. D- about, uh, you ain't got to worry d- about models, guys in the models, all that. You know, you can you can. Uh, you know, I actually you can wear your jewelry out there. You can mm-hmm. Use your cell phone out in public. So the Mar- the Margo Smith says I treat everyone with respect who dropped those panties for me. That guy's a character, but you know, again, you be, you you mm-hmm. were there. You you brought Sam to the beach last time when you was with Lima. Right. Well, that was my first time out there, and I'll I'll go back out there again. Um, a- again. Certain guys, and I kind of talked about this on Big Boss's channel, you have travelers that they go there to just do the pay for play, right? Then you also have travelers who like to hunt. And then you have travelers that love the vacation. So right now, I'm between the vacation and the hunting. You know, I, I do enjoy going somewhere randomly 
at either meeting a girl from a dating app or the nightclub. My preference, even though I've been getting a lot of love on dating apps, is still the nightclubs. It's still the bar. Um, but it's good to know, okay, if I'm going to Peru, if I'm going to Colombia, if I'm going to Ecuador, and if I'm arriving there during the week, like on a Monday or Tuesday, I don't really have to wait until the weekend to like start meeting girls. You know, the dating apps kind of prep you up. When you arrive, you already have the dates, you're already getting it in. And then bam, like you're, you're feeling super confident when you go into that bar or nightclub for the weekend. You're yeah. part of the preparation. One hundred percent, bro. That's one hundred percent preparation. You have to see what's what's out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I know. I know guys, man. that have been traveling for the last twenty years, and fifteen mm-hmm. of that twenty years, they've been going to the same spots. Sasua. Sasua. Oh, Sasua right. twice a year. Yeah, Harper. Can you can you enlighten us on DR? What what's your thoughts on that place? Because for most Brothers, that's like their heaven, their paradise. And we got somebody in the back. Spicoli. Uh, <laughs> What's going on, player? What's hey, up, player. man? Staying it hey, up. No hey, no comment this time. <laughs> stay on topic, but first Never. of all, Spicoli, uh, are, are we going to go on a vacation anytime soon? Any Any plans, any travel plans? Yeah, uh, I was going to mention that. I was okay. going to say, QB, let me run this by you. Sure. What would be, if you think about it, what would be the greatest, out of all the passport bros, what mm-hmm. would separate you from the rest of them? Besides, Great question. Uh, that is okay. a good question. Okay, that let is... me try to tell mm-hmm. you what I think might help. <clears throat> if you and I, let's say, we want to wait till the weather cools off. So let's say November. We mm-hmm. go down to Mexicali, right. and obviously I'm a filmmaker, so I can film you and stuff. I'm not yeah. just going to be like, so you could have your little camera, I could have my camera, you know what I'm saying? But right. I think this would separate you from all the passport bros. This would be your best video. This would be, I think it would be a viral video, personally. And what it would be is, you're going to show how well the what better way, I guess, I'll, I'll sum it up. What what better way to show how great passport broing really is than taking my 65-year-old rear end down to Mexicali, you and I walk into one of these whatever bars, we're in mm-hmm. there for a couple of hours, we film the outside, we film the inside, we film whatever they let us. And basically, the whole video is basically how my 65-year-old ass can go down to Mexicali and within two or three hours, I've inserted my you know what into a 19 year old Latin, the JJ. What do you think about that? Where we actually show uh, my 65 year old rear end, we won't show the details, but you'll interview me afterwards. We're gonna show the boys at home that yes, within two, three hours of being down there, my 65 year old ass got banged by a 19 year old senorita. What do you think of that, UB? Yes, and Spicoli, if you want to make that happen one of the weekends, absolutely. Because here's why. I'm going to answer yeah. your first question in a minute, but I'm going to say why this would be a cool thing to do. Yeah, You're taking action. You're not a doomer. So why, you know, the other people, and we don't have to mention their name, they like to talk bad about you. You are injecting yourself into a beautiful Latina. And they're mad and miserable because they're not doing that. And they rather stream about other guys 24-7. So that would be a cool thing. Now, what separates me from other Passport Bros? um, You have me. You have me. Well, hold on. No, (laughs) that's not true. (laughs) Uh, For one, I like to go to cool, unique places. I don't go to, like, the same place 24-7. Uh, I show my excursions. I show things that I like to do. Um, I visit monuments. I visit landmarks. Yes. Of course, you're going to see the women. And so 
that's where I'm different from a lot of passport bros. So a lot of, and I'm not dissing them because again, everybody has their own audience and I'm going to get to the super chat in a minute, but I'm more well-rounded like, okay, this is how you can meet girls off the Tinder. This is how you can meet girls on the nightclub. This is how you can meet girls through a social circle. If I took a trip with Ray Harper back to Ecuador, it's going to be epic. (laughs) You know, we would be at the Red Lion having fun, drinking, taking shots, and damn near, we can almost do a, a OnlyFans afterwards, all right? <laughs> I'm, I'm being serious. Just yeah. John, the same thing. You know, he's 6'3", speaks fluent Spanish, all right? I had a blast out there in, in Peru. So... You see it in real time with me. Plus, it's like, okay, this guy has a steady girlfriend that he's been dating three years in Mexico. You don't really see a whole lot of passport bros that are dating the local women. Yes. that That's a huge advantage that I have. I mean, yes, you see them with women, but a lot of them women, you know, they, they pay them. They pay them. They pay them to be on the channel. They pay them yep. to to be in the video. I'm not, I'm not paying... Uh, Spicoli, please. I'm not paying any girl to come on my channel at all. You know, if you don't want to be filmed on camera, cool, no big deal. There's a girl that wants to be on camera. So yeah, that's okay. that's the difference. But before you say something, I got to get to the super chat uh, with the Colombian peso. Andrew Baker, man, salute to you. Uh, salute to QB and the panel. I was thinking about going to Ecuador and Peru for next month or two. Your stream has talked me into going. That's what I'm talking about. This, yeah. this right here. Uh, how much time should a first timer travel spend in each country? We're going to go around the panel. Okay. We're going to answer this super chat. I appreciate that. And the Colombian peso. Um, Ray, you go first. If he had to choose between Ecuador and Peru, how much time should he spend in each each place and why? I would say for Ecuador at least ten days, two weekends. At okay. least two weekends. I think that's a good because you could do more and you could get to go to the beach and enjoy that situation as well. At least mm-hmm. one of them. If it's not Salinas, at least, you know. General, bigger male, or you go to Montañita, one of the three. And that's like gonna be way different. As mm-hmm. well as when it comes to Peru, if you just wanna do Lima, I think again, 10 days, cause you could get to spend five days in Miraflores, five days in Barranco. And if you wanna do something else, you could do that too. If you wanna do the whole Peru, like, you know, Cusco and the whole thing, which is so many adventures you could do there, I would say like in Italy, it's like 15 days. So you could do that as well. So I would say Peru as a complete country, something quick, 15 days. If you're only doing Lima, 10. And Ecuador, 10 as well. Nice. Just John? Uh, Can you repeat the question real quick? So I know you haven't been to Ecuador. How much time should he spend in Peru for a first-timer? Now, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. I can only speak for me. But yes. As I said, my problem with Peru is that they do look too indigenous. So, really, even even the one, bro, the brown one you had. Okay, I know you have your preference. There are the exceptions to the rules, but yeah, <laughs> she was nice, dude. She was nice. Granted, you know, we didn't show her face because you know you want to be behind the scenes, and that's cool. <sighs> okay, so go ahead, continue. Didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, no, she was great, but Mm -hmm. at the same time, most of them do have that indigenous look. So when I did end up in Barranco and stuff like that, uh, Mm -hmm. I know Ray Harper said he wasn't into the the pros, but -hmm. there's this awesome place that I recommend. Anyone who likes pros have to come here. And it's called the Suite de Barranco. Los Suite de Barranco. So let me tell you, you will find the top tier chicks in in this place. Mucho dinero. <laughs> well, it, it is a lot of money, but the thing is, it's a lot of money because this place is well known because um, 
there are a lot of like government officials who act, who have actually gone in there for sex. So, oh wow, that, that's why. But you're talking like the range. Can I get a 19 year old in there? Can I get a 19 year old? Uh, Spicoli. <laughs> so you, you can basically you can find a lot in there, like anyone, and so. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd say like man I remember there was this one chick that I remember perfectly in there um, that I that I slept with man and oh my god you know she was in she was a beautiful Paraguayan chick and okay. um, and man I, I'm never gonna forget that moment man I'm telling you guys if you guys are into pros you have to go there but overall for me if I ever go back to Peru I think it's only to go for the food because it's just something you cannot miss Okay. Not the perky. Oh, oh, Spicoli! Come on, man. I just answered that question, but anyway, I, as I said, you can think... say Poo Tang Pie. That's strike <laughs> one. Okay, just keep it PG thirteen, Spicoli. Uh, Bug Travel. Can you can you answer his super chat, and then I'm gonna follow I'm up with it. Sorry, can you repeat the, uh, the question again? Um, so I know you only been to Peru because he's determining between Ecuador and Peru. If he's going to Peru for the first time, how much time should he spend for a first timer in Peru? I mean, it, it really depends on the traveler's uh, experience. Mm-hmm. If this person is a world traveler, you know, that can adapt quick, maybe at most a week and a half. But if it's their first time out of the country, Mm-hmm. I would say minimum two weeks to get two their uh, to they get their dollars worth. Right. Um, like I said, the women are there. Um, most are ind- indigenous looking, but if, if you are in the Mira Flores in the Bronco area, you can, especially in the Bronco area, you're gonna find those uh, European uh, looking uh, Hispanics. Right. And, and, and 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 let's not mention you you saw some Afro Peruvians too. So Afro Peruvians. Uh, so Afro Peruvians. Right. Uh, there are some out there, and right, they are thick out there. Um, um, oh, yeah. uh, and no no clap of the other uh, groups, but the ones with the bodies I was seeing it are the Venezuelans and the Afro Peruvians. So if you are a person into like bodies and all that, you know, you're not going right. to find that in the, in the, the other Peruvian women. So, uh, okay. but definitely, definitely with the highest adjustment, come, come over there for the food. Uh, the food is what it actually Peru is known for, for his food. So a lot of world travelers go over there just for the food and the adventurous hiking and all that. Uh, but as okay. far as the women and all that, they're not competing with places like Colombia and Brazil, you know? Got it. All right, so let me answer this. I would say... Can I answer? Uh, no, 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 Spicoli. I'm going to answer it, and then, <laughs> and then you can answer, okay? Okay. Um, for Peru, definitely about 10 days minimum, because yeah. you have Lima, you have Cusco, and then you also have this desert that's like two, two to maybe three hours south of Lima, that is great for wine tasting. I think it's called Pisco. You need to go there. That Pisco liquor is on par with tequila liquor in Mexico. It is yeah. it is fire. Okay. So definitely minimum 10 days. So you can do Cusco, Lima, Pisco. Um, for Ecuador, I would say about 10 days too. If you're going to go to Guayaquil, you got Montanilla, which is four hours uh, north. And then you also have Salinas, which is only two hours. But you can see Quinto. Now, QB has not been to Quinto. I do want to go there. Um, so there might be another part two to Ecuador in the future. But Guayaquil, I'm sold. That that is a cool place. I got an, another little shorty down there too, which you guys are gonna see a little bit on the channel. So I would say ten days for both places for a first timer. Spicoli, go ahead. I would basically sum it up real easily, QB. Mm-hmm. You go down there as long as it as long as it takes to get laid. If seven days, ten days, two weeks, <laughs> a month, you go down there until you get laid. If it's right. three days, you stay three days. If it's two days, you stay two days. If it's 24 hours, Ooh. whatever amount of time it takes to get laid, that's how long you go. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's true, too. Uh, that's true. Really quick, 
The four ninety nine from Demargo Smith. This five dollars isn't a super chat. I want you to buy me a Corona in Cancun next week. In other words, Ray, you're cool. not going to get you're not going to leave until you get fucked, right? That's the uh, bottom line. Spicoli. Sorry, sorry. True. That's strike number two, man. All right, I just need you to <laughs> keep a PG thirteen. You were good last stream. You 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 know LFA even tell you Spicoli to chill. It's the you can't do this on this platform, man. That, that's that's what I'm trying to tell you. But all right, uh, yes, no problem. I, I I will get you on a Corona down there in Cancun. Uh, this guy Demargo, anywhere he goes, he 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 makes it happen. Great wing guy. Um, so you, you guys might be seeing some Cancun content on Instagram first before I upload it here on YouTube. Um, really quick, um, uh, I know we're getting close to the two hour mark. Uh, let's go with some final thoughts here. Uh, Spicoli, let's go with you, yeah. man. Final, final thoughts? Yeah, final thoughts. My final thoughts are basically that, guys, it is over in the West. We all know that. Mm -hmm. We see what these women are like. If you're not, I'm going to just make a point. You guys have sure. three choices, four choices. Let me sum it up again. Mm -hmm. Either do what QB is doing and what I'm going to be doing. That's number choice one. Choice number two is end up with a fat chick. That's choice right. number two, because 70, 80 percent of these women are fat. Choice right. number three, if you stay in this country, it's pay for play. If you want a woman who's a six or seven or higher, you're going to have to pay for it, probably. And choice mm -hmm. number four is you don't know what even if you run into a hot chick in a bar and QB can confirm this. Nowadays, guys, you can run into a beautiful woman in a bar and you don't know what the plumbing is like downstairs. If you catch my drift, that's probably <laughs> quick work. We don't know. <laughs> even I never had that PG issue. Bar, but... the, uh -huh. I'm trying to be politically. I'm trying to keep it PG. The most right. beautiful woman you see in a bar today, her plumbing may not match exactly how it used to match five, ten, fifteen years ago. So what mm -hmm. I'm saying is, you could be fooled by the plumbing, and not even know it. So, what do you think about that, QB? Am I right? Well, well, there's a lot of signs, right? You, you, first of all, there could be a situation where you're fooled, right? But yeah. normally, if you put your hand down there and it's it's not a taco, it's a hot dog, then you already know. You know what I'm saying? You don't proceed forward at all. What if it's a small hot dog, though? What, what if it's a small hot dog? dog? <laughs> Again, uh... A hot dog to hot dog, I, I'm think I'm very thankful that has not happened to me, and hopefully will never happen to me. But, but it could happen to people. It could it? It, it could happen to people. But if it does happen, you don't proceed forward at all. No. Period. No. Mm -hmm. uh, mission but travel. aborted, guys. guys <laughs> you abort your mission right away. Abort, abort your the mission, mission ASAP. ASAP. Yo, I don't I don't mean to interrupt, but you have mm -hmm. a super chat there that you should read. Oh, oh, okay. My bad. Um No Cap. Oh, by the way, the panel's open, no cap. If you want to come on really quick, all right, you know, we're we're in the fourth quarter here. Uh Cancun, do you stay in the tour strip area? Thank you for the three dollar super chat. No, I don't. Not in the tour zone. You can stay inland fairly cheap, but the best time to go to Cancun is during the off season. So the homie DeMargo, we're going during the off season. So things are really, really cheap right now. Uh, you know, the high season is during the winter time because you get all the snowbirds from Canada and everywhere else. So when it's December, January, February, March, spring break, that's the high season. And here's no cap right here. I'll let him rock for a little bit. What's up, bro? What's good? What's up? 
Uh, really quick, do you have any questions in regards to Ecuador for myself or Ray or anything else? Uh, is it good to, is it okay to be like wander in some of the outskirts or does it get kind of dangerous, sketchy out there? Uh, or Cancun? Place, or Cancun. Ecuador, is, is it a place you oh. can just sort of just roam, roam around in, in the city? And to do your thing and yeah so for guayaquil no you you want to stay in the north side and the san Bernardino area uh if you're wondering like in central at night that can be dangerous or in the south side that can be very dangerous but the malecone if you want to walk around there and it's it's long it's i think it's like two miles okay you can walk up and down. There's police there. Nothing's gonna happen. Is is there a lot of like streetwalker type chicks, or is it more? Just oh, like so in in regards to that, uh, there is a section in the town. It's kind of near like an industrial zone, so you gotta be you kind of gotta be very very careful. Now I have not been. I, you know, when I was going to the club. The promoter pointed that out, like, this is where all the pros are in this little area over there. And I'm like, okay. So they do have that. That's available, adult entertainment, um, if you're interested in that. But otherwise, you just otherwise you can just go to that Malacone area, hit the clubs, mm -hmm. hit the bottle service, and just... just do right, whatever. right. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Um... Now, there's a place, I believe, north of Quinto, where it's it's a city with at least 10 brothels. So if guys want to write, and nobody knows about it, because no one talks about Ecuador. But the promoter guy, he told me about that. He was like, hey, man, if your friends ever want to come down here, uh, this is the city where you would do it and it's north of quinto so yeah that's if you're interested in, in doing you know the whole pay for play thing uh when i was out there it was just strictly nightclubs meeting girls off of tinder for the yeah. most part mm -hmm. it's nice to have that to know the options there so you know, right the option yeah you know so it goes. The 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 option is there and i believe they also have massage parlors there as well so again if guys let's just say they strike out right they go and they're only there for four days and they want to leave home happy you know having that experience you can do that there in in ecuador how much Give him a price. I don't know how much Spicoli, but I know it's That's under. The first star, strike. It, it's under. <laughs> I'll give him one more. It's under 40 roses, okay? Under, under 40. 40 guys. Under 40 roses in Guayaquil. Jesus, under 40. Mm hmm. I, I was thinking. Tell him it's a 19 and 20 year old. Tijuana, you can navigate oh. anywhere. I'm sorry. Go 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 ahead, no caps. Macaulay, be quiet. What were you, what were you gonna say about Tijuana? If you can navigate safety and uh, hustling in Tijuana, you can survive pretty much anywhere down in South America because Tijuana is the dangerous of the dangerous, you know. Um. Yes, yes, and no. Um. Y yes, because you'll have that experience of how to interact with them but no because it's very regulated and a lot of red light districts are not regulated compared to tijuana so if you go to like medellin for example i mean yes you will see street girls there but you know they don't have medical cards um you know you don't know if they shower between customers and stuff like that. So, Ooh. yeah, exactly. You don't know what they're growing down there is what he's saying. Am I correct, Hubie? You do not know what they're growing. You don't know what they're incubating down there, guys. No, Tijuana, 
and DeMargo's right on this comment. They they protect Americans. So Yeah. Yeah. I would say if guys are gonna do the whole P for P and wanna be extremely safe, Tijuana is the best place compared to What about to... Mexicali where we're going? <clears throat> yeah, Mexicali is very safe. But very safe though. Yeah, they just don't have the abundance like Tijuana. So, but there's not as many guys going there. You don't have as well, many people, right? Yo, yo, the, those P for P girls, man, they got more bodies than a cemetery, man. Yes. So, sure. so, I'm renting it. I'm not there. buying it. So, look, I'm look, renting look, look. it. I'm not buying it. I don't care if they've got it's a open, thousand bodies. Open, what do I care? Open. So when you're going over there, they're kissing on them, be careful. <laughs> right. Well, you know, again, he's looking to have a good time, right? Uh, he's been there, done that. So I can understand. Uh, one thing I will say, I do love Mexicali. The nightlife is great. It reminds me of Phoenix, Arizona. You know, being out there in the in the, in the desert, just not a whole lot to do during the day, and it gets really really hot out there. But you know, it's the end of summer, so the weather is going to be kind of good. Um, yeah. So. To answer your question, no cap, because we're going to end this soon. If you go to Ecuador and if you want that option, it's available. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all, I don't they're all available. Understand. That option is available in no. third world all the time, right? QB? No, no, not every place. Not every place. Not like every what place. What place wouldn't have it? Give us a place that wouldn't have it. Um, to be honest, so I know there's to stay a, out of there. This way, I know to stay out of there. Which places don't have it? Right. No, there there are places uh, in Mexico where they don't have brothels. Like for example, Mexico City, you will not find a strip club or a brothel in Mexico City. It's too religious. You, you would have to go outside the city limits, and it's extremely dangerous, and people just don't do that. So that's one place. But use anyways, Tinder, use Tinder, Mexico City, right? Use Tinder. Yeah. Yeah. Tinder. Yeah. But again, you're going to meet a local girl. You're not going to meet a P for P girl. In okay, Mexico so City girl. Using Tinder. If you're American. It's easy to get with a local girl, isn't it? Tell them how easy it is for an American to get with a local girl. It, 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 uh, it depends. Go on ahead. Buck travel. Uh, how uh, the American looks maybe. Right. Decent looking. Uh, I don't know. It's gonna be. It's gonna be easier than somebody. You know, right. That looks like the elephant man. Exactly. Right. But if you're American, right away you're given a certain amount of status, right, QB? You're getting a certain amount of status, but again, you have to humble your expectations. So for you, I'm being honest. If you went to Guayaquil, Ecuador, being 65 years old, you're not going to get a 19-year-old girl unless you pay for her. That's just keeping it big Obviously. Right. Well, I'm just letting you know because, again, you have certain people with the ideology exactly. that they can just show up and hook up with this type of girl, and I'm saying, no, it's not going to happen. All right? Looks still matter. Looks matter out there in Ecuador, Mexico City, um Peru yeah, you're, pounds, you're not gonna get laid no matter where you go, right? Exactly. Exactly. Not if you use John Anthony lifestyle program, right? Just kidding. <laughs> right. Yeah. So right. Yeah, right. Scopeland, so, 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 uh for you is like, you know, if I was on your shoes, I mean, I'll probably do the people people. And once I reach your age, uh that's an age where okay, I'm like, okay, nothing with me, nothing with me. You're kind of fainted away there, Bug Travel. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah, so, so I'm sur QB. I'm surprised you liked uh, Ecuador over Colombia, man. Because usually, guys, yeah. guys, guys, uh, you, from you, Colombia you, are, are number one, man. Right, like I said, the food, the liquor, and if you look earlier in the stream, those places, the bars. The Aminats is really nice. Like, I love stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. If I go to Mexico City, prime example, and, and Ray, you can speak on this. There are a lot of upscale places, some cool, trendy places in Mexico City. Yeah. 
Polanco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he he lived there for three years. So, you know, it, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, unfortunately, like I said, the service, I did not like service in Colombia. It was bad. You know, at the restaurants, um, bars, the, the service was, was really, really bad. So that's why. What was it bad? What was bad about it? It it was slow. They were slow. Uh, (laughs) You know, it's like, okay, do you guys want a tip? Like, hello, Gringo's here to visit your place, and it was somewhat kind of rude. So I'm just like, all right, I'm 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 good on that. Um, But anyways, let's go ahead and end this so QB can get going. (laughs) Uh, no cap. Final closing thoughts. Oh, I was going to ask a question. You was in, um, I'll ask a question. Mm-hmm. as my closing thought. You was in Barranquilla or you were in Medellin? I went to Barranquilla. So I think I've, I've been there. There's mm-hmm. not much there. It's like a small town. You probably want to have to be there a couple months to get something out of it. No. no. Um, let me, let me just show. I really want to save this though. Yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna hold out. But anyways, I met me a cool mulatto chick out there in Barranquilla, and you'll you'll see it on the stream later. I literally flaked on three girls when I was out there in Barranquilla because nice. I was I wasn't Whoa. there long enough. Yes, yes, I Your was not there long teased. enough. Right, Your vagina teasing them. You teased them. Right, I I did, but that's okay. That's okay. Your vagina teased. Good for um, you. Spicoli, final closing thoughts, brother. Final closing thoughts. Mm-hmm. Just keep growing the channel, keep passport growing, because as far as I'm concerned, my 65-year-old rear end says it is over in this country. These women are too fat. They're too entitled. They're too <laughs> masculine. If you don't go overseas, even these hot chicks are very masculine and shit. If you don't go overseas, guys, you're just going to be frustrated. You're going to be left with fat chicks, entitled chicks. Uh-huh. Chicks with mixed plumbing downstairs, just the right. whole gamut, fucked up chicks. You are forced to go overseas if you don't want to. Look, 70, 80% of these women in America weigh, the average woman in America weighs 171 pounds. So mm-hmm. the average woman, guys, think about it. So that means a woman who's a six or seven could weigh 150, 160 pounds. If you want a thin chick, you must go mm-hmm. overseas. If you want to make sure the plumbing matches downstairs, you must go overseas. If you want to make sure they're not entitled, you must go overseas. If you want a woman who's not too masculine, you must go overseas. Am I right, QB? Preach. Preach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Spicoli. Um, Let's see. Just John. Okay. Sorry. Just John, final closing thoughts. Uh, first, I want to say shout out to Harper for being in the stream. You know what I mean? And thanks for the information, bro. I really appreciate uh-huh. it because, you know, it is on my bucket list. And I'm glad you were able to give me some intel on, on Guayaquil. And thanks, QB, as always, you know, for the hospitality and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess some closing thoughts I have is, um, as you guys know, um, I am I am planning my trip to Argentina. Uh, as Burn. as QB said it in the last live stream. Yep. Yes. Burn. Well, when are you I'm not going? Gonna, I'm not. I'm not exactly oh. going to say one yet, because okay, I want okay. you to drop the live once I'm back and stuff like that. So I want it to be more of like a surprise. I'm not going to uh-huh. say how long either until then. So I'll keep okay. all that hidden. I do have some big plans that I'm not going to talk about just yet. I've I've shown QB what what I'm what I'm cooking out there. I've already Shut shown up. him. Um, and man, it's, it's going to be a, a great trip, man. Uh, I hope you guys will be there for the live stream because I will be talking about it with QB and, uh, yeah, just overall thanks. And, um, yeah, I guess that's my closing thoughts. Nice. Uh, Ray Harper international man, final closing thoughts, man. Oh, John, I was only asking cause I'm going over there soon. So I was just trying to see if you're going around the same time, but, um, just in case. Let me know backstage. Once QB closes the live, we'll talk about it. All right, sounds good. Um, 
TV, you're looking out for bringing me on. Thank you, thank you, thank you, man. It's always a pleasure. Um, I think for me, it's like every time, like I, not too long ago when I used to watch like all the YouTubers, they always keep talking about like the four, the big three or the big four or whatever they talk about. And I, it's okay with me, like VR, Brazil, Colombia, all of that good stuff. But there's more out there. And I think it's good that we are able to bring options, you know, like, because the way I see it is like, okay, yeah, big three, but it's like 4,200 of us in Colombia competing, mm -hmm. for, competing for the same thing. When you could go next door to Ecuador and be like three of us, and then they competing for us, which is the opposite, which is what you want, abundance, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Like, I feel exactly the same way you feel about it. It could be like, I want to go see different things, experience different cultures, get to see different people. And, and that's my thought. That's my idea. That's what I want to do. Um, I, I, I don't feel like the big three is the most that you need to keep flying for one to the next throughout the whole year. I definitely mm -hmm. think experiences is definitely going to be better for your, you know, for your knowledge and for you as well to, you know, get to go on different cultures. So, I mean, all in all, Ecuador is an amazing city. If you guys are able to go, definitely take the chance. Even if you go for a few days first, get to know it, you know, fill it out a little bit and then you can come for longer. But definitely try it, man. You're not gonna, you're gonna love it out there. I promise you 100% you're gonna love it. Of course, do your research, reach out to the people that have been there before. So that at least when you get there, you already have some type of knowledge of the land. That way nothing is like brand new to you. Like before I went, I connected with QB first, you know, to make sure that I get my intel. And when I was there, it was so much easier for me, man. From the first day to the last day, I would say definitely check that city out. You're going to love it. I mean, that's all I got to say. All right. Perfect, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, and for myself, thank you guys for watching the stream. I got a video coming soon on Ecuador, the Red Lion Sports Bar. I'm going to have some videos on Salinas. Um, I might yeah, even... Coming up too. Okay, cool. Uh, I might have another video in regards to the nightlife. So there might be a nightlife part two video. And then once I do Ecuador, you got the Colombian videos coming through soon. Your boy will be back out there in Cancun this weekend. So follow me on Instagram. You're going to see all that information. And uh, yeah, I will holler at you guys on the next one.